Okay, on this example, we are given a demand function, a function that connects together price and quantity. We're told P's price, Q is quantity, I guess in thousands. But our main goal here is to calculate the elasticity of demand at $5, at $15, and then figure out exactly what price would maximize our revenue. So on the first part, I'm gonna go ahead and calculate this at $5, and then we're gonna look at $15 in a second. We're going to go ahead and create a general uh, elasticity of demand formula as we go through it and then maximize our revenue figuring out that price. All right, so some components that we're going to need. All right, we're going to use our demand function that already has Q on one side by itself, which is actually very nice. Um, sometimes you have to rearrange these and solve for Q on one side by itself. All right, we want to evaluate this at a price of 5. So Q is going to be 400 minus 5 squared. So Q is going to be 400 minus 25 is going to be 375. Alright, so what that tells us is, I guess, at a price of $5 per item, we can sell 375,000 items. Alright, the next thing we need is DQDP. Alright, DQDP is equivalent to Q prime. All right, and we'll evaluate this at five for this specific one. So dqdp, the derivative of our demand function. We can just use the power rule and that shouldn't be too bad. The derivative of 400 is gonna be zero, but negative two, and then it's gonna be p next to that. But we need to evaluate this at our specific price. In our case, we can say that's gonna be negative two times five is gonna be negative 10 is what we're gonna fill into the formula in that place. All right, from here, the elasticity of demand is the price, 5, over the quantity, 375, multiplied by the derivative of the demand function evaluated at 5, which we said was negative 10. All right, so in this case, that's going to be negative 50 over 375, which is going to work out to be smaller than 1. It's going to be about 0.13. All right, it's important that we note that it's less than one because that's the magic number, all right? If the value comes out, the elasticity of demand is less than one, we call that inelastic. All right, and figure out, should we increase prices or decrease prices? What's that actually tell us? Here's how we can interpret it. For every 1% we increase the price, the demand is gonna decrease by E percent. So for every 1% we increase our price, the demand's only gonna decrease in this case by 0.13%, all right? Because revenue is price times quantity, price times demand. Um, if we're increasing by one but decreasing by less than one, what that tells us is we want to raise prices if our goal is to increase our demand. All right, let's run through something very similar here. What I'm going to do is go ahead and carry along the different information, right? We know that Q was 400 minus P squared, and DQDP was negative 2P. So we'd already done those, that calculation of the derivative. I'm going to use that on this next calculation. All right, so we have to figure out what's our quantity going to be if we're charging $5 or $15. Well, our quantity is going to be 400 minus 15 squared, or 400 um, minus 225 works out to be 175. So Q is going to be 175. So charging $15, we can sell 175,000 units. All right, DQ DP is going to be negative 2 times 15 or negative 30 as we fill into our formula. So elasticity of demand at $15 is going to be 15 for P, 175 for Q, multiplied by negative 30 over here. All right, so a little bit of simplifying down here. That's going to be negative 450 divided by 175. As we take the absolute value and make it a decimal, that's going to be approximately 2.57. But remember, the magic value we're comparing this to is 1. And that's bigger than 1, 
So that's telling us that if we want to maximize our revenue, we're charging too much. Okay, when it's bigger than one, we call that elastic. And that tells us, you know, that we should lower those prices. All right, because at this point, if we increase our prices by 1%, the amount that's going to be demanded is going to decrease by more than 1%. Okay, so last one, remember we had Q was given to us as 400 minus P squared, and we computed DQ DP was equal to negative 2P. All right, same information, just bringing it down to the last part. So in this last part, our goal is going to be we want to come up with exactly what price should we be selling this for if we want to maximize our revenue. So filling into the elasticity of demand formula one more time, this is the absolute value of P over 400 minus P squared multiplied by negative 2P. And let's focus in on this. I'm going to go ahead and think this is in the numerator, so I can put these together in the numerator. So negative 2P squared over 400 minus p squared. Now as we get rid of this absolute value sign, I'm going to take the absolute value and you really don't have to worry about the denominator on this. We're just going to make that a positive 2 in the numerator. So as you have to enter these in sometimes on the online homework systems, this is the format right here that they want. Alright, remember our magic number, 1. What we want to figure out is when is this what we refer to as unitary. All right, unitary would be when our elasticity of demand, E, what we were computing here, is equal to 1. Okay, so let's work on solving this down. First thing I do is I notice that we have P down in the denominator. We can't solve for P while it's in the denominator, so I would go ahead and multiply both sides of this equation by that denominator. So that's going to get us to 2p squared equals 400 minus p squared. Now the rest of the solving down hopefully won't be too bad. We want to get all the p's on one side, so let's add p squared to both sides. All right, 2p squared minus another p squared makes 3p squared equals 400 on the right hand side as p, negative p squared plus p squared go away, right? They make zero p squareds. I'd still like to isolate the p squared, so I'd like to get rid of that 3 out in front, so let's divide both sides by 3. This will make it into a power equation where we have p squared equals 400 divided by 3, which won't simplify down very nicely. But all we have remaining is we need to get rid of that square. Let's apply a square root to both sides. Now because p is price, it doesn't really make sense to have both a positive and negative out in front here, because why would we charge a negative price along the way? All right, and to finish this up here, that's an exact answer, but a lot of times to figure out these real world examples, you want to put this in your calculator and actually evaluate what is the square root of 400 divided by 3. So I got this to be 11.547, meaning that I would round this up to 11.55 to the nearest cent for exactly what we should be charging to maximize our revenue. All right, remember, maximizing our revenue is going to occur whenever elasticity of demand is unitary or equal to 1. All right, hope this helps out as you're working on elasticity of demand. I know there's a lot to, to kind of uh, gauge and get comfortable with. Good luck.